What a Wonderful World is a pop ballad written by Bob Teal as George Douglas and George David Weiss. It was first recorded by Louis Armstrong and released in 1967 as a single, which topped the pop charts in the United Kingdom. Teal and Weiss were both prominent in the music world, Teal as a producer and Weiss as a composer, performer. Armstrong's recording was inducted in the Grammy Hall of Fame in 1999. The publishing for this song is controlled by Memory Lane Music Group, Carlin Music Corp., and BMG Rights Management. History One source claims the song was first offered to Tony Bennett, who turned it down, although Louis Armstrong biographer Ricky Riccardi disputes this claim. George Weiss recounts in the book Off the Record, Songwriters on Songwriting by Graham Nash that he wrote the song specifically for Louis Armstrong. Weiss was inspired by Armstrong's ability to bring people of different races together. Because he was gigging at the Tropicana Hotel, Armstrong recorded the song in Las Vegas at Bill Porter's United Recording Studio. The session was scheduled to follow Armstrong's midnight show, and by 2 a.m. the musicians were settled and tape was rolling. Arranger Artie Butler was there with songwriters Weiss and Tyler, and Armstrong was in the studio singing with the orchestra. Armstrong had recently signed to ABC Records, and ABC president Larry Newton showed up to photograph Armstrong. Newton wanted a swingy pop song like, Hello, Dolly, a big hit for Armstrong when he was with Cap Records, so when Newton heard the slow pace of, What a Wonderful World, he tried to stop the session. Newton was locked out of the studio for his disruption, but a second problem arose, nearby freight train whistles interrupted the session twice, forcing the recording to start over. Armstrong shook his head and laughed off the distractions, keeping his composure. The session ended around 6 a.m., going longer than expected. To make sure the orchestra members were paid extra for their overtime, Armstrong accepted only $250 musicians union scale for his work. The song was not initially a hit in the United States, where it sold fewer than 1,000 copies because Newton did not like or promote it, but was a major success in the United Kingdom, reaching number one on the UK singles chart. In the United States, the song hit number 16 on the Billboard Bubbling Under chart. It was also the biggest selling single of 1968 in the UK where it was among the last pop singles issued by HMV Records before becoming an exclusive classical music label. The song made Armstrong the oldest male to top the UK singles chart. Armstrong's record was broken in 2009 when a remake of Islands in the Stream, recorded for comic relief, which included the 68-year-old Tom Jones, reached number one in that chart. Tony Bennett did go on to record, What a Wonderful World, several times, as in 2003 with K.D. Lang, paying homage to Bennett's friend, Armstrong. ABC Records European distributor EMI forced ABC to issue a What a Wonderful World album in 1968 catalogue number ABC's 650. It did not chart in the United States, due to ABC not promoting it, but charted in the UK where it was issued by Stateside Records with catalogue number SSL 10247 and peaked on the British chart at No. 37. The song gradually became something of a standard and reached a new level of popularity. In 1978, it was featured in the closing scenes of BBC Radio's The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and was repeated for BBC's 1981 TV adaptation of the series. In 1988, Armstrong's recording appeared in the film Good Morning, Vietnam despite the film being set in 1965 two years before it was recorded and was re-released as a single, hitting number 32 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in February 1988. The single charted at number one for the fortnight ending June 27, 1988 on the Australian chart. It is also the closing song for the 1995 movie Twelve Monkeys. In 2001, rappers Ghostface Killer, Raekwon and The Alchemist released The Forest, a song that begins with three lines of lyric adapted from What a Wonderful World, altered to become An Invitation to Get High on Marijuana. The rappers and their record company, Sony Music Entertainment, were sued by the owners of What a Wonderful World, Abilene Music. 
The suit was thrown out of court after Judge Gerard E. Lynch determined that the altered lyric was a parody, transforming the uplifting original message to a new one with a darker nature. By April 2014, Louis Armstrong's 1967 recording had sold 2,173,000 downloads in the United States after it was released digitally. Topic: <laughs> Charts and certifications. Topic: Weekly charts. Topic: Certifications. Topic: Eva Cassidy and Katie Melua version. In 2007, Georgian-British singer-songwriter Katie Melua recorded a version of the song with American singer and guitarist Eva Cassidy, who had died in 1996. Recorded by Melua singing over the original Cassidy track, the duet was released in late 2007 as a charity single for the British Red Cross. Melua, who considers Cassidy one of her musical idols, had previously sung with Cassidy in this manner on Christmas Eve 2006, when she performed, Over the Rainbow. On the BBC One television programme Duets Impossible with a videotape of Cassidy singing the song, upon release, the single debuted at number 45 on the Scottish Singles Chart on the week of December 9, 2007. The next week, the song rose 44 positions to number one while also debuting at number one on the UK Singles Chart, becoming both Cassidy's and Melua's first number one single in the United Kingdom. However, the song quickly dropped off the UK chart after peaking, spending only five weeks in the UK Top 100. In Scotland, the song stayed in the Top 100 for 11 weeks. The cover was also successful in Poland, reaching number 5 on the LP3 chart in February 2008. In November the same year, it peaked at number 19 in Sweden and became a minor hit in Walloon, Belgium. When the song reached number one in the UK, Melua thanked everyone who bought the single, saying, Thank you to everyone who has shown such festive goodwill. The duet was later included on her 2008 compilation album The Katie Melua Collection. <laughs> <laughs> Charts Weekly <laughs> Charts <laughs> 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 Topic Year End Charts Topic Other Notable Versions Nineteen eighty nine Roy Clark, on his album of the same name, peaked at number seventy three on the Billboard Hot Country Singles Chart. 1990 The Flaming Lips, as the final track on their fourth album, in a priest driven ambulance. 1992, Nick Cave and Shane McGowan, the lead single and title track to their split album What a Wonderful World. The single reached number 72 on the UK charts. 1993, Israel Kamakawi Will, Hawaiian ukulele version medley with Somewhere Over the Rainbow on the album Facing Future sold over 2.5 million copies in the US and Canada alone. 1994, Patti Smith performed the song at the memorial service to her late husband Fred Sonic Smith. In her 2015 memoir M Train, Patti Smith wrote, Whenever we heard it Fred would say, Trisha, it's your song. Why does it have to be my song? I'd protest. I don't even like Louis Armstrong. But he would insist the song was mine, so I decided to sing Wonderful World a cappella at the service. As I sang I felt the simplistic beauty of the song." 1999, Anne Murray, on her platinum release of the same name, which also spawned a book and video the album reached number one on the US CCM chart, number four on the US country chart, and number 38 on the top 200. 1999, saxophonist Kenny G re-recorded the song, keeping Louis Armstrong's original vocals intact for the album classics in the key of G. 2002, Joey Ramone's posthumous version was used for the ending credits of Michael Moore's film Bowling for Columbine. 
2003, classical crossover artist Sarah Brightman included a darker and quieter rendition of the song on her eighth studio album Harem. 2004, Rod Stewart recorded a version of the song with Stevie Wonder for Stewart's album Stardust, The Great American Songbook, Volume 3 released in the United States as the lead single from the album and by early 2005 reached number 13 on the Billboard Adult Contemporary Chart. 2009, the Clarks version was recorded for their album Restless Days. This version was also featured on The Simpsons' season 27 premiere, Every Man's Dream. It is also used after every home win for the Pittsburgh Penguins at PPG Paints Arena. 2012, Pat Byrne reached number 3 in the Irish singles chart after appearing on The Voice of Ireland. 2015, Tiago Eorque's version was recorded to be used as the opening theme of the Brazilian telenovela Set Vidas. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Appearances in film, television, and others. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Film. Topic. Television Topic Others A recreation of the song was used in a 2004 MCI Inc. commercial. Joey Ramone's version was used in a Windows Vista commercial in January 2007, during its official release. Joey Ramone's version was used in a commercial for the video game Ratchet & Clank Future, Tools of Destruction in 2007. Topic. Sources Internet Movie Database Jim Henson's Red Book